welcome to today's webinar with the title Mini Micro Microwire HDI PCB Sample WE.MicroBGA. I am Andreas Schilp, your host of today's World Electronic Circuit Board Technology Webinar, and I would like to welcome you. The speaker in today's webinar is a qualified specialist from World Electronic Circuit Board Technology, Andreas Dreher from our technical project management. Welcome back, Andreas. And now I wish you lots of fun and new information. Thank you for your kind introduction, and I'm happy to be here in our research and innovation center in Künzelsau. I'm Andreas Dreher. Um, as the other Andreas mentioned in the technical project management, uh, there we try to find a lot of good solutions for our special dedicated technologies and my uh, point of interest is uh, HDI design which we have uh, later a very close look together and also signal intelligence and high-speed designs and since 2003 in uh, World Electronic on the facility in Schopfheim and have a background in our uh, laboratory um, had a lot of investigations in new processes, materials, so I have a pretty good background about our processes. But let's welcome another special guest today. That's our HDI sample, uh, which is available since um, a few months now. We will introduce together to the sample, have a closer look what it is, what it can explain. We will have a closer look in routing BGA components, uh, look in the background into our production, what that means for us in our PCB production, and have a brief glimpse in impedance calculation. So if you know my presentations, I really like to start with um, this idea in mind. Uh, it's a very complex system when we talk about PCB and PCB designs, and they are all linked together in a special manner. For example, let's start with the components. If in an early design phase, you as a designer choose the components, uh, you do a lot of um, system relevant decisions, which will later also influence uh, why this chain link, a lot of other topics. For example, if you choose uh, a BGA, often you define uh, with it the stack up itself. We come to back, uh, this back later in a few slides. On the other hand, you also influence uh, the cost in production directly. So I, I like this uh, idea in my mind that all these parameters are linked together and, and closely tied together. And the important message here is if you lock one uh, gear in, in this system, doesn't matter which one, if you lock one, the whole system is blocked and we cannot uh, go on. So that's why very early um, a good partnership and talk about the processes is very important. So let's have a look to the sample itself. The sample represents a typical industrial board, um, which is used in, in several machines, in automotive, uh, in sensor applications. So it's a very wide variety. It's, it's very much simplified, of course, uh, to meet uh, the size restrictions. And with, like all boards, yeah, you have some, some power lines where you have some big connectors to feed in the power. Typically, you have some memory chips here also shown in the BGA, some QFP components for switching or deciding processes. And very often you have um, a BGA uh, included, which is sometimes the main processing unit, which make the, the overall decisions. And at the end, often you need some interfaces to the rest of the world, which is typically uh, um, PTH via uh, through hole technology where you have to combine the old fashioned uh, drilling way with a more modern uh, HDI technology. 
from the outside, it, it looks um, pretty nice, but the details are hidden inside. So we have specific impedance requirements, we have a runtime matching, and also a very complex stack up. And I don't want to overrun you with, with all the much details in the stack up. We'll come to it later and um, go in detail there. But I want to start on a little bit simpler explanation. We have the brother, uh, the word electronic fan, the basic sample, where we have a standard uh, BGA component with a pitch of 0 0.8. And this component is uh, still big enough that you can use mechanical drilling, through hole drilling through the board to make the routing and the fan out. So here you have your pads, you make a through hole and have your connection on some layer uh, to have all the pins mm -hmm. available. Let's start here with this um, simpler explanation and grow to the micro via uh, BGA sample later. So the 0 0.8 millimeter pitch component is the smallest one which can be uh, fan out with plated through hole technology. Uh, you see here it's a typical dog bone structure. You have a solder pad, the vias next to it connected with this uh, bone like uh, structure. Here simplified you can do a direct connection with a track to the pad and you can feed some tracks in between and connect the next row. But to go uh, with the third row, yeah, you have to go to the inner layers. So if we make a mechanical fan out, we can only feed one a line between the pads. So we need a lot of different layers to make all the connections in this 20 by 20 row BGA pits. So you need at least seven layers to fan out this BGA. And this does not include any power or ground planes. If you need them, you have to add them additionally. And in the PCB production, we always think symmetrically. So the seven layers will be at least an eight layer. We always do it uh, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on. So even if it's a kind of simple BGA, yeah, you define the stack up already pretty closely. You cannot go lower than eight. Typically, it would be at least a 10 layer. Now we have some design rules and some options. You, you can do a technology change from through hole with dog bones to micro via pet technology and can place laser drilled hexasoles from one layer to the next layers in the pet and the diameter is smaller, the pad can be a little bit smaller, um, and you can do the same component, the fan out on the inner layers. Yeah, you can route two layers between the pads. So you need in total only three layers to make the same fan out. This is a very uh, good option if you have other signals on your board and you need the other layers to feed some, some different signals through. So the uh, costs of the microvia are a little bit more, but you have a benefit of more signal on less layers. That's one, one important uh, point on the microvia technology. If we go a step further, if we compare the 0 0.8 millimeter pitch uh, BGA to the microvia BGA, which has only a pitch of 0 0.4 millimeters, with the same pinout count, um, we save also a lot of space. So either you have the option of have less layer or more components per space, you can fit the same amount of components on less space. This is a big advantage. And you can uh, use that for make the overall PCB smaller and if you followed our webinars, we have a pretty good webinar about um, cost in production. The size of a board is um, one of the main factors of defining the cost. So if you can 
use smaller components, make the board overall smaller. Um, you can save money with microbia technology. And also you have other benefits. We have design rules for this on our homepage as shown here. Of course, yeah, you have to use smaller pets. The space between the pets is so small that you cannot feed any uh, traces in between. So for every row, you have to go for a separate layer. So to fan out this board, we need a pretty complex stack up. That you are aware of our stack up drawings, I have a little lookup table, what the different features mean here. I don't go to all of them. It's just for, for reference, uh, only a few details. We have the buried vias here in the middle. Uh, they are resin filled and kept. Uh, we have the micro vias laser drilled here, connecting one layer to the next layer. Here in this area, they are staggered. So they are offset to each other. And here they are stacked. Uh, which have uh, both advantages and disadvantages. Let's have a look how we produce such a board. So we start with the inner six layer, press them, drill them, make copper in the hole and fill them in the so-called filling process. Um, if you order a standard six layer board, yeah, then the board is ready. If you want to have such an advanced board like the sample, now we have to go sequentially through the production, add one layer, laser drill it, go to the galvanic process, make the copper into the hole, uh, repeat the process and repeat it again, that we have a complete uh, PCB. In total, this means in this example that we have six galvanic processes, five photo processes for making the inner layer structures and the outer layers, and four press cycles to have everything included. This adds, of course, additional um, production time yeah, for press cycles and, and four or five photo processes means you can produce in the same time uh, four separate boards. So this is uh, one thing. And of course, all this complexity adds cost. With the advantage of this um, miniaturization, if we have a closer look to the micro vias here, uh, we have some, some cross sections. Yeah, again, we have a staggered micro vias offset to each other in different uh, variations. From top to bottom, yeah, we have here copper filled micro vias. They are completely filled, very often used if we have a via impact technology, if it directly add solder here on top to make the solder process simpler to avoid voids and we can fill them completely with copper. In the middle layer, we have a resin filled um, microvia with a filling paste. So if we have a buryvia in, in the inner layer on this stage, the resin gets filled uh, in the buryvia filling process. And here a standard more or less non-filled microvia, but of course in the pressing cycle, the pre-preg resin of this pre-preg will flow in the microvia and fill the gap. So it is pre-preg resin filled. On the other hand, we have a stacked microvias. To stack them on top and have a reliable microvias, we need a good filling and they have to be flat. Uh, if not, they cannot stack together. So here we need a uh, free separate copper filling processes to make it possible. And you see with all this complexity and all these different options, uh, it is very important to have a very early discussion in, in the design phase between the project partners. And in that case, it means uh, the designer, the PCB producer, and also maybe the assembly shop um, that, that we agree on a technology because yeah, the whole thing is more than the sum of the parts. Very important here. Again, coming back to this topic, if you have a technology choice, uh, for example, filled microvias, uh, it, it will uh, affect the impedance requirements and the stack up, for example. So here, a very early discussion 
is necessary. To understand that a little bit better, I have a few examples in, in our production. Let's start here in the inner layer production. In the inner layer production, we start with a core material, which is both-sided copper clad, full copper everywhere. We laminate this blue etching resist on top, uh, put light on it, develop it, everything with light, stays hard and is solid. Uh, everything without light gets washed away, developed away. And then we go to the etching line. In the etching line, we add the process uh, solution. And this is a, a spraying process. And when the etching agent starts his work, he etches into the depth. And for every micro, um, micrometer, it etches to the depth. After a few seconds, also the flanks are exposed. And it also etches away left and right uh, the copper. So that's why we have this very typical uh, shape of the inner layer. And you see here, <clears throat> we have some, some overlap of the resist because we know how our machine um, behaves, the, the spraying nozzles. Uh, we have a very dynamic um, etching solution to have here the etching. And we can uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we know how strong the etching to the sides is, so we make it wider. But you see here, if the copper thickness would be thicker, we need a more overhang. And then this gap here is too small. And if it's too small, we don't get the etching agent uh, to his working place, and the etching will not be affected. So as bigger the copper is, uh, as wider this gap has to be. To give you here an idea, we have in the basic design guide a very good chart where all the different copper values, for example here for the inner layers, the different starting foil um, are mentioned, what typical um, is widths, and for us very, very important is the spacing. <clears throat> the line width itself is for us in production not so important. The space is the deciding factor for us. So as thicker the copper gets, as more space we need here. And this is requested here in this chart. <clears throat> a good example in, in the real life, if I have a small component like a BGA, I need some fine line structures. And then I should do it as fine as necessary. But outside, in, in the rest of layout, I should use as much space as possible. Because here, it's not, not so critical. But it will definitely affect our yield. And if it affects the yield, it will also affect the price. So if you want to have a, a very good um, cost to usage relation, you should extend the space in the non-critical areas as much as possible. Another idea <clears throat> would be asymmetrical layout definitions. So very often we use symmetrical definitions like 100 microns uh, line and space. But on the, on the same space, I can do 80 micron line and 120 micron space. This will be beneficial for the production, affects the yield, and will affect the cost, with no disadvantage in in the price uh, in the in the layout. Uh, you need the same area for your layout with a better yield. <clears throat> so one other critical process is the filled via process. This is an extract from our webinar about uh, filling and um, tending of, micro, uh, of, of vias in general. If you want to have a closer look, uh, the webinar is online, you can go to there. Just a quick run through. Uh, we start with drilling the, for example, burial vias. We have to go to the galvanic to do the first metallization, come into the vacuum chamber, evacuate the air that we don't get any bubbles, fill in a printing process, this uh, resin, cure it because there is some, some uh, mush head 
uh, mushroom head, uh, we have to send it. And then the type 5 uh, via is done. This will be a typical buried via. Sometimes it's necessary to add a cap metallization to close the via when it's a type 7 one. For example, if you want to use it as a solder head for a uh, via in PET, and if you have in the same process some through hole components, we have to go back to an additional drilling. And in, in this metallization, cap metallization, also you make a through holes. But important message, we have to go twice to the galvanic. We add twice, uh, two times copper to the surface. And in a cross section, it can look like this. We have the cap metallization here, the filling resin, and a lot of different copper um, here on the surface. And if this is too thick, now I cannot realize fine line structures. Again, uh, as a lookup, uh, if you have a 75 micron um, line width, you know, the maximum copper thickness is roughly 30. So if you have this process, uh, it, it will not work uh, with fine line structures. Keep that in mind. And here again, as early as we talk together, if you have your you know, component, um, maybe with some impedance uh, requirements, come to us. We can do a simulate before fabricate process, check the copper thicknesses, check the stack up, give you some recommendations about available line and spaces, and you can start your design process that is later producible in our plants. I talk a lot about microvias. How do we form these microvias? As I mentioned, it is a laser process. So we start with a first laser. Uh, the first laser is pretty small. It has a roughly a um, diameter of eight micron. And yes, a spiral process to open the copper. So you see here in this picture, the copper on the surface is burned away. You see the exposed glass fibers and some resin. In a second step, we come with a different laser type. Uh, it is the beam is much wider, roughly 300 microns, and it will burn away the, the resin and the glass fibers, but will not affect the copper at all. So on the surface, uh, we can use it as a shielding. And the important step is it stops on the inner layer and don't make any damage to the inner layer. In this process, some residues uh, will form. And these residues have to remove in a so-called desmere process. It's a wet process in the galvanic, where we again feed some liquids uh, to the board to dissolve these um, residues to have a good connection for the galvanic plating, that we have a very good connection and can achieve maximum reliability. Here are some, some close-ups from this process. So first step, opening the copper. Uh, second step is to remove the glass fibers and the resin, and then the microvia is formed ready for plating. Very often asked question is what is the, the cost about it? And one important comparison is you have always some, some fixed process cost yeah, here for the mechanical drilling. It's the, the setup of a machine, the setup of a program. And if we have a look, yeah, we have this, uh, this fixed cost and then we have variable costs. If we have a look to this drill bit, for example, 0 0.4 millimeters, uh, of course, the drill bit will wear out. Typical, it can uh, do up to 3,000 hits. When it gets changed automatically and a new freshly drill bit is used. But you see, as, as more vias you add to your design, it's more cost it will create. If we, we use smaller drill bits, an ex extreme example 0 0.2 millimeters, you see the, the tool has a different shape. It is very thin and it is also shorter. So this will add more costs and such a drill bit can only use, for example, 1,000 hits. So the tool is more expensive, the lifetime is less, so the variable cost per via will be higher. With microvia laser drilling, we 
the laser will not wear out uh, so fast. So we have a fixed cost on top for the laser drilling. And we use a separate machine, so we have separate um, machine costs for, for setting it up. But the costs per via are very marginal. So the breakpoint where you have uh, and cost advantage with micro vias, you can achieve with small ribbits very fast, but even with standard ribbits, uh, there is a, a breakpoint where laser drilling gets cheaper per via than generally. So here again, important message, when you use micro vias because you are forced like this small uh, 0.4 millimeter BDA, use it as often as possible in your layout because you can lower the variable costs of the drill bit. Uh, laser drilling has a fixed cost for the process, but then uh, the, the increase the number of years is pretty small. And here I want to ask you if you have an idea why, and if you have an idea how fast a laser drilling machine can drill holes. And we have prepared a small um, question and I will hand over to Andreas. Okay, so now I have started the poll and the question is how many laser holes can be drilled per second? You have five different options, please make your choice. So I will wait a few seconds. We have passed 30% participation, 40%, 50%, so quite fast. That's nice, so let's have another five seconds. Then I will close the poll and show the result to everybody. So the answers should be placed in a special window, which is blue. So I see also one answer in the question field. So. That's not how it is planned. Okay, so let's um, close the poll and show the results. So we have answers for every option. 7% meaning 5 microwires per second, 8% meaning uh, 300 microwires. Oh, that's a, a fault by me. <laughs> <laughs> that should be 750 my so, so okay so we count 30 percent and eight percent that means 38 percent meaning 300 microwires per second uh, 33 percent 150 microwires per second and 22 percent 75 micro microwires per second so that's quite uh, well distributed and now let's hear Andreas Drea about the real numbers. Okay, thank you for your feedback. So uh, most of you have a very uh, good feeling and have prepared a little video from our laser drilling machines. So it can produce really 300 holes per second. And I hope the live stream is, is okay that you can see uh, what is happening here. Unfortunately, due to the safety shields, I have to uh, make the video through a glass window. <clears throat> and you can see here just, just a little uh, flashes. You can see here the two different uh, lasers working on the right-hand side. It's a bluish color. This is the first laser, which is opening the copper. And the second laser is for one who is burning away the resin and the glass fibers. And it's so fast, yeah, you just can see a few tiny flashes. Compared to mechanical drilling, uh, the, uh, according to, to different machines and spindles, you, know, you can see here every, every hit is one drilling. Actually, it is still drilling, even if it looks like punching. Uh, but really, we have drill speeds uh, up to 160,000 rounds per minute. So it is pretty fast, but still compared to the laser, uh, no comparison. And that's why the costs per via in the laser are so comparable cheap to the mechanical drilling. And that's what laser drilling makes attractive. So 
different options with filling is available. We already mentioned uh, that. Very important, uh, you have to decide and contact us very early uh, that, that here is everything is done as you intended it. Another inter interesting fact is um, fine structures and tracks on the outer layers. So often with, with uh, high speed components, yeah, you have this uh, runtime matching on the separate layers. And if you have such small details on the track, it is also very important uh, in our process to create this fine details. On the outer layer, uh, the process is a little bit different than to the inner layers. The general idea is the same. We have full copper on this uh, on this layer. We add and resist. And then we go to the galvanic and have some selective plating where we add locally copper on these places where you ordered it. Uh, it would be waste if we plate 100% of the copper and later have etched away 70% of it. So in this process, it is better to have this local selective plating. One disadvantage is it is um, affected by the design, by the layout design. So the galvanic works always with the current density. The current is fixed and the density of the pads or the tracks are affected by the layout. If you have small layouts, uh, you have locally a higher current density and more copper. If you have big planes, it's a little bit less. As I mentioned, we have a simulate process. We can do the calculation beforehand, adjust accordingly, and, and set up the right processes if the layout allows us this. But sometimes the layout is not optimal, like shown here in this example. Yeah, we have here a nice mixed layout. Uh, we have done the simulation here. Uh, 50 micron was planned, 50 micron was achieved. We have a nice structure and no problems. But here in this area, we have some tracks which have no copper around it. So here the local copper density is higher. So you have higher copper thickness, in this case 20 microns more. And the etching was set to 50 microns. So it did not etch away everything. So we have a failure, a short here, and the board will be sorted out by the electrical test, which is not, not nice for us. and um not nice for you also to avoid such issues our recommendation would be to fill as much copper as possible if you have an an even distributed layout this is fine if you have three areas you can fill it either with copper points or with um, such cross hatch pattern or we prefer flooded copper everywhere uh, to have a very even layout. Please avoid uh, such kind of structures where you have only tracks uh, with nothing surrounding to it, especially if this is an impedance related uh, track. This would be very disadvantages. So coming back and sum up the um, design features. So if you have the technology choice really early by the components yeah we can fulfill the impedance requirements and choose the right design rules everything is fitted together linked together if you make a change on one side yeah, the whole system will move and and change the outcome we talked a lot about impedance requirement and in the preparation of the webinar um, we mentioned that Talking about impedance is um, our own topic on itself, and we decided to make a more detailed webinar in early of next year uh, to go there in, in all the details. Just to give you a feeling um, about the impedance, typically you have a line somewhere which has uh, a thickness, T, a width, W, and, and dielectric to your ground plane uh, in this sketch uh, mentioned with H. And the influence to the impedance is different. 
on, on this thickness. And typically, uh, the material with a dielectric constant is fixed. So the influence here is medium, and you can change it by change the material, but inside a typical stack up, the material is given. The copper thickness is defined by the galvanic process and the design choice, and the influence is also small. So our most important uh, factors to change in the design is the line width and the layer spacing. And these points are opposite to each other. So as wider the track gets, as lower the impedance gets. And you can accommodate this with higher um, layer spacing, meaning dielectric thickness. There are a lot of different impedance models. Just a brief overlook. You have different configurations on the layer. You can have them on the outer layer with a ground layer on the inner layers. You can have it on the inner layers or shielded as a strip line on both sides. You can also have single impedance, differential impedance, or coplanar impedance. And this all adds to so much factors that it will not be helpful uh, to have fixed um, stack ups, impedance uh, stack ups. The, the, the variants are, are so wide that typically you would always choose the wrong fixed setup. So our recommendation would be come to us, ask us for an impedance calculation in an early state when you have chosen your components before you go in the real um, layup. We can do an impedance calculation and set up a stack up, give you as a feedback the line width uh, for every different impedance signal. You can go to your design, uh, finalize your design, and then we have a producible board. In general, we offer three different steps of um, impedance. We offer the impedance calculation before the design phase. We can do an impedance manufactured uh, board where we have um, a, a higher test frequency in the AOI, for example, to measure the inner layers that they are really fixed. We freeze the, the stack up, no changes happen here. And if you need some proof that really uh, the impedance is, is met, we can add test coupons to the panel and measure it per panel uh, directly in the production that we really can prove the bubble board has matched the impedance. Keep in mind to add these coupons. These coupons need some, some space in the production. It can be that we have to remove some, some PCBs will add to some extra costs. Pretty brief overview. A lot of important, important information in this uh, impedance setup. So that's why we decided to make it more detailed uh, earlier next year. If you have uh, some some uh, questions to it, feel free to contact me with your uh, project and we'll find a solution together. So to sum up uh, for presentation, if you use microvias, use it not only in the BGA area, use it everywhere. If you can achieve a change in size with this miniaturization that your board gets smaller, you can save much costs and HDI can be cheaper than, than a standard uh, board. If you have tight spaces, yeah, use small uh, conductor spacings where necessary. And in the rest of the layout, use a lot of spacing to improve yield and improve cost. Also keep in mind, uh, asymmetrical line and space parameters can help here. If you have impedance requirements, contact us as early as possible uh, with your concept idea before the design freeze is done. If, if uh, the design is, is frozen and you have some uh, external tests maybe already done, and due to process physics, we have to change the layout, you have to do the work again, which would be very unfortunate. So at the end, really, an early discussion between the partners uh, enables a highly um, outcome, a good outcome of the project. 
so that's all from here. Uh, if you're not already ordered your samples, feel free to uh, visit our homepage and order it from there. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you here from this side. <clears throat> okay. So thank you very much, Andreas, for the detailed explanation about the HDI technology and especially about the HDI um, PCB sample, we.microbga.